Hello, everybody. Welcome to Community Conversations. It's nice to see so many people here at the beginning of the quarter. I think we have a great uh, topic to get people engaged in our series on books that move us. I have a couple of announcements. If you're here for Humanities 106, remember that you will be writing a one-page paper uh, that'll be due on Tuesday. So check Canvas for the details on that. Uh, next week, we have a, uh, a, a local book club that's going to come in and talk about how they are not your mother's book club. So please join us again next week, next Thursday, same bat time, same bat channel. And I have a special shout out to Humanities Washington, which is sponsoring our series this quarter with a generous grant. So we are very thankful to Humanities Washington for allowing us to put on this series and funding us for this quarter. So... Today, I'm very excited to bring a new person into the Community Conversations fold. I always like to recruit new people to bring fresh ideas to us. Um, Ashley Cahill is faculty at LCC in the Bachelors of Teacher Education program. She is a former kindergarten teacher and has a master's in teaching as well as a graduate certification in curriculum and adult education. And in her free time, she enjoys traveling and snuggling with her two-year-old and six-month-old. And she is a Hufflepuff. So please welcome Ashley Cahill. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? In the back? Awesome. Thanks. Uh, welcome. I appreciate you all giving your time to be together and talk and talk about literature. Um, we often show up in our day as if we are a computer internet browser with lots of tabs open. And so sometimes I feel that I have my to-do list on my mind and I have many other things on my mind. And I want to invite you all for the next hour just to be present and uh, participate and be together with uh, the rest of the folks in the room. And so I'm gonna ask you to imagine your internet browser and either close those tabs, or if you're like me and that gives you some anxiety, just minimize your mental internet browser. So the one thing that's open today uh, for the next hour is just this. So one way I do that is I like to just take a deep breath. And so I'd love to invite you all to take a deep breath with me in and out. There you all are. Great to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Um, I want you to begin reflecting, what are some really important things in your life? If you have a piece of paper and a pen, and folks at home, if you could grab a piece of paper and a pen, I want you to write down three things that are really important to you in your life. And once you've done that, you're welcome to set this paper aside. We'll come back to it at the end. So you're welcome to let it sort of leave your mind and enter the world of Harry Potter. So um, we're going to just start by talking about Harry Potter, the books. We've had a little bit of hiccup with the actual presentation, so it might take us a second. Okay. So the Harry Potter series is a British book series of seven novels, and it was first published in 1997. 500 million copies have been sold, making it the best selling book series of all time. I did not know that when I decided to present on this. And then after realizing that, I thought, okay, this topic um, you know, has some gravity. People really do love this series. So what is the book series about? So Harry Potter is a boy who learns on his 11th birthday that he is the orphaned son of wizards and that he also possesses unique magical power. He is summoned from his life as an unwanted child to become a student at Hogwarts, which is an English boarding school for wizards. There he meets several friends who become his closest allies. 
The main story arc concerns Harry's struggle against Lord Voldemort, a dark wizard who intends to become immortal. And he also wants to overthrow the wizarding governing body known as the Minister of Magic. There are a lot of themes of social justice and inclusion within all of these novels. So Harry goes on his own hero's journey of sorts, but he's never alone. Here you can see some illustrations done by Jim Kay uh, of some of Harry's allies. And he also uh, meets many mentors. Something unique about my love and passion for Harry Potter is that I discovered these novels as an adult. I'm not one of the folks who read them as a child and fell in love with the world. Um, I began to read them in college and I couldn't put them down. The world of Harry Potter became and still very much is a huge part of my identity. I asked myself over and over again, I'm not a person who gets stuck on fads. So what is it about these novels that call to me? What's so transfixing? What transfixes so many of us? And it's taken me down a really interesting road. And I want to invite you all on that road today. Well, we're only gonna be spending a little bit of time actually talking about Harry Potter. What we're going to be digging into is what is it about Harry Potter that makes so many people fall in love and how can we use that information to lead more fulfilling lives? So I began to explore again, why so much of the series really captured my attention and my love. And I came across three themes. home, belonging, and togetherness. No matter how terrible or difficult things ha that happened to the characters were, they still belonged somewhere. They still had strong, powerful relationships and they overcame obstacles together. So what was actually magical about the Harry Potter series had nothing to do with the magic. Author F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote that it is part of the beauty of all literature. You discover your longings are universal longings, that you're not lonely and isolated from anyone, that you belong. And that is really what I want to touch on today. So let's explore these themes and where they're most prevalent in the books. And we are also going to watch some clips from the movies to sort of see how the filmmakers have interpreted the literature as well. Plus it's fun. So <laughs> for those of you who have never really seen or experienced the books or the movies, um, I want to encourage you just to be open and uh, bring a bit of whimsy to this um, and, and just um, have fun. We'll look first at the places. Hogwarts. You all know, of course, that Hogwarts was founded over a thousand years ago. The precise date is uncertain by the four greatest witches and wizards of the age. The four school houses are named after them, Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, and Salazar Slytherin. They built this castle together, far from prying muggle, non-magic eyes, for it was an age when magic was feared by common people and witches and wizards suffered much persecution. For a few years, the founders worked in harmony together, seeking out youngsters who showed signs of magic and bring them to the castle to be educated. From Harry Potter, Chamber of Secrets. This is what I mean when I say there's something magical about Hogwarts school that goes beyond its actual magic. The goal of Hogwarts is to take children who may have felt alone, unusual, isolated, and bring them together to create community. Many students consider Hogwarts to be their second, or in some cases, only home. Hogwarts is a safe place to flourish for everyone to be themselves. And for those who felt left out in the muggle world, 
to meet others like them and find community. Though the books and novels have many differences, like all true Potter heads, I would encourage you to read the novels first, uh, but I do wanna use clips from the films. So let's take a look at, if you were a new student, your first glimpse of Hogwarts. Pretty magical. <laughs> the next step when you enter Hogwarts is to be sorted into your house. There are four houses like I mentioned before. The next clip we're going to watch is one of Harry Potter's friends, Ron Weasley, being sorted into his house. Another Weasley. I know just what to do with you. Gryffindor! So once you're sorted, the houses become your family. You share a common room and you also uh, have dorms. That's where you live. So your house is quite an important part of your time at Hogwarts. Uh, lastly, I wanna mention the Great Hall. The Great Hall is where all the houses come together for their meals and for conversation. And it's really a, an important place of gathering within the novels. Your attention, please. Let the feast begin. You can see here all the houses at their house tables enjoying a meal. I'm half and half. My dad's a muggle. Mom's a witch. Bit of a laughing shock for him when he found out. So it's not just the places in the Harry Potter novels that give you that waking up on Christmas morning sort of feeling, but it's the relationships as well. So I'm going to focus on two in particular, and that's Harry's relationship with his best friend Ron's family, the Weasleys, as well as his relationship with his mentor, the headmaster, Albus Dumbledore. So the Weasley family are of little means and they have seven children. They take Harry under their wing and become his second family. In the scene I'm going to show you, the Weasley twins, Ron's elder brothers, have rescued Harry from his non-magical aunt and uncle's house, where he was locked in his room all summer. And uh, this is the first time that Harry has ever been to a magical house. Yeah. 
It's not much, but it's home. I think it's brilliant. Where have you been? How wonderful to see you, dear. That's Molly. <laughs> the Weasley mom. Last, I want to touch on um, Harry's relationship with his mentor, Professor Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts. Dumbledore is a constant source of wisdom and non-judgmental love. And his perspective is what often draws many readers to him, my personal favorite character. Um, so this is just a small glimpse into their relationship. You'll notice Harry is much older. Help will always be given at Hogwarts, Harry, to those who ask for it. I've always prized myself on my ability to turn a phrase. Words are, in my not so humble opinion, our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. But I would, in this case, amend my original statement to this. Help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who deserve it. Do not pity the dead, Harry. Pity the living. And above all, all those who live without love. Originally, I thought it was quite strange being a 20-something college student, binge reading the Harry Potter novels for the first time. But Hogwarts and Dumbledore was feeling something that I needed. Once I realized this, it bugged me. I thought, what are these powers of belonging and relationships? And what role do they have in our happiness? How can I bring what I feel when I read these books into my life, into reality. And that's when I discovered the Harvard Study of Adult Development. And that's where we're going to go next. So what makes a great life? That was the question that Harvard scientists set out to study when they began tracking 268 Harvard sophomores and 456 Boston inner city residents in 1938. They hoped this long study would reveal clues to leading a healthy, happy life. They've been doing this study for over 80 years. There's been TED talks about it. There's been write-ups about it all over the news. They collected vast amounts of data, not just data on health, but also on not just physical health, but also mental health. So over the years, researchers have studied the participants' health trajectories, their broader lives, careers, relationship, marriages, and they found something really interesting. What do you think they found? Good genes are nice, but joy is better. They found that close relationships more than any other factor is what kept people healthy and happy in their lives. Those ties protected people from life's speed bumps. They helped to delay mental and physical decline. Quality of relationships were better predictors of long-term health than social class, IQ, or genes. And this was proven true, not just for the Harvard graduates, but for the inner city residents as well. So they examined many types of data, interviews, medical records, questionnaires, and they found the strongest link between those who had happy, healthy lives and their relationships with their family, friends, and community. So it was found that people's level of satisfaction with their relationships at age 50 was a, the biggest predictor of health and happiness at age 80. 
people who are more socially connected to family, friends, and community are more likely to live happy, healthier lives. The more isolated that they were, the more health would decline as well as brain function. And it's not about how many relationships you have and definitely not how many relationships you have online, right? Not your followers, not your likers. It's about quality relationships. Quality relationships are a protective factor. They don't prevent bad things from happening to you, but they help you absorb them. So originally I was surprised by this. This is shocking. But I was also going to school to be a teacher and learning about human development. And I thought, wait a second, this should not be surprising because we are social creatures. For a majority of human existence, we have been hunter gatherers. This, all this we see here, all this living in separate houses, this is all new. For a majority of time that our bodies have existed in this form, if you look at this graph, the green is hunter-gatherer, the red is present day. So our environmental, our environment of evolutionary adaptedness is community. Hunter-gatherers lived in tight-knit community bands and depended on one another for survival. Human beings are intrinsically social creatures. And this might be deep down, we understand that there's safety in numbers. Science director of the Greater Good Science Center at University of California, Dr. Simone Thomas stated that biology, neuroscience, and psychological studies have shown us our bodies work better when not in isolation. We have literally evolved to live in community together. So we tout ourselves, uh, we're independent, right? We, we pride ourselves on, um, you know, going out into the world and making our own way. But that is all incredibly new. Our evolution has not adapted to do that. We were meant to do things together. And so I often began to wonder, is that why I love these novels so much? Because they show me something that deep down my evolution says, that looks very natural, being together with others. Okay, so what do we do now? Where do we go? What are some actionable steps? Here's just a, a, a photo of uh, living in community, sharing jobs. I, I want to leave you with something. Um, I don't want to just say, Harry Potter is magical. Read the books, have a great day, bye. Even though like, that's great also, you should read the books. Um, I want to take a deeper look at some tools that actually helped me with relationships and I hope might you know, inspire some of you. There are two relationships that are incredibly important. One is your relationships with others, but also your relationship with yourself. We're going to look into the work of Dr. Phil Stutz. Uh, this is Dr. Phil Stutz, and Dr. Stutz's life's work is helping people become more fulfilled selves. For several years, Dr. Stutz served as a prison therapist at Rikers Island. And during this time, he discovered a unique method known as the tools that helped his patients get active strategies so they could improve their lives. He wrote, I actually developed the tools out of frustration. Back in the late 70s and 80s, I was frustrated with psychotherapy. It dealt with the causes of people's problems, but it didn't help them where rubber meets the road. I felt like I hit a blank spot where I take a person to a certain level of self-understanding but then they needed to do something actively to change themselves. And I couldn't offer them anything. I began to make up solutions on the spot to force myself to say something. After doing this many times and working with hundreds of clients, I found some wisdom 
surfacing out of my unconscious. Dr. Stutz, who lives with Parkinson's disease, found it beneficial to draw the tools for his patients. And we're gonna see some of his drawings coming up. In order to understand how the tools can be used, we're going to first look at what Dr. Stutz calls your life force. And I apologize, closed caption is not available. The only way to find out what you should be doing, it's like who you are, is to activate your life force because your life force is the only part of you that actually is capable of guiding you when you're lost. If you think of it as a pyramid, there's three levels of the life force. The bottom level is your relationship with your physical body. The second layer is your relationship with other people. And the highest level is your relationship with yourself. I feel that it's often more difficult to work on your relationship with yourself. So let's start there. Um, we're going to use a tool today that Dr. Stutz developed called the Grateful Flow. I didn't fly in an airplane until I was 16. On my first flight, it was a really dreary Pacific Northwest day, dark clouds. Then something really incredible happened. When I got above the cloud cover, I saw the sun and it was shining brightly. The sun, in fact, had always been shining that day, but there were just clouds blocking my view below. When your mind is filled with negative thinking, thinking you've been taken over by the black cloud, it limits what you can do with your life and deprives the loved ones around you about what is best about you. So we're gonna use a tool today called the Grateful Flow. Uh, if you feel comfortable, if you could close your eyes or simply look down so the screen and myself is not distracting you, that would be helpful. I want you to imagine that you are on the ground and there are clouds above you. But remember, above those clouds, the sun is shining. I want you to begin to list what you're grateful for. Silently say to yourself specific things in your life you're grateful for, particularly items you'd normally take for granted. Go slow. Feel the gratitude for each item. Don't use the same items repeatedly stretch for new ones. I want you to feel the sensation of gratefulness. Next time a new item comes, I want you to block it and instead feeling the feel, feel the feeling that it gives you. After about 10 more seconds, I want you to just focus on the physical sensation of gratefulness. I want you to feel it coming directly from your heart. This energy you feel is the grateful flow. As this energy emanates from your heart, your chest will soften and open. In this state, you will feel filled with the power of infinite giving. When you're ready, you're welcome to look up. You're welcome to take a breath and just sit with that feeling for a minute. We have this power at our fingertips to just take a minute of our time and feel this grateful flow. This is Dr. Stutz's drawing of the grateful flow sort of cutting through that black cloud. This is something tangible that can improve your relationship with yourself immediately. I also wanna take a look at relationship with others. We're just gonna do one more tool and it's called the maze, active love tool. Sometimes our thoughts can trap us in a maze where we get stuck on negative thinking, thinking about a, a person negatively or an experience that we had, and we get trapped in the past, what Dr. Stutz calls the maze. And today we're going to use a tool called the active love tool that will sort of help us bump us out of the maze. So I want you to think about 
an experience or a person that you have a, a strained relationship with, something that keeps you in a maze. Now, if you could look down or rest your eyes again, I want you to feel your heart expand to encompass the world of infinite love surrounding you. I want you to feel yourself taking in all the love of the universe. It's almost overwhelming the amount of love that exists all around us. I really want you to feel that overflowing. Now, I want your heart to contract back to its normal size, but I want you to concentrate all of that love inside of your chest. You are going to take that love and you are going to send it to the person or situation that you imagined in the beginning. Hold nothing back. Emanate all of that love directly to that person or that situation. When the love enters the other person, don't just watch it. See it enter and become one. I want you then to relax and feel all the energy you gave return to you. You're welcome to open your eyes and return. This work is something you can do to begin freeing yourself from the nothing that the maze does and go forward with your life. Remember, the goal is connection and not perfection. So your goal should be, how can I make connections in the world and free myself from this negative thinking? So I want you to pull out that list you had at the beginning or, or recall it in your mind the list of the things that are most important to you. Here's my question. Does where you invest your time and energy in your life reflect what's on your list? Does where you invest your time and energy reflect what's on your list? And what does that time look like? And are you on that list? Is there anything on your list about self-care? Did you write down that you were valuable and that you were important? In the spirit of building connection, we're going to do something a little different. Some of you hopefully grabbed a, a quiz a, it, it's a Hogwarts sorting hat quiz when you walked in. Hopefully someone around you at least grabbed one. I didn't anticipate the turnout, so I only printed 20. So if, if someone around you has already taken it, if you can share your copy with someone who doesn't, I'd like you to all turn to the page that has the actual quiz on it. And I'd like you to take some time to figure out which Hogwarts house you are in. The key is up here. Go ahead and raise your hand if you're in need. All you need to know is your number. So the back has pictures, the front is actually uh, numbered. If you're on Zoom right now, there was a link sent to you to figure out your house. So if everyone could just take a minute and find out what Hogwarts house you're in. You simply circle the number that most pertains to you and at the end, you add up your number. I'm also here to help and support you uh, if you have questions. But up here, it'll tell you Gryffindor is 10 through 17. Ravenclaw is 18 through 25. Hufflepuff is 26 through 33, and Slytherin is 34 through 40. Around the room, I have posters set up for houses. 
And I'm going to challenge you all to meet someone new today. Once you've taken your sorting quiz, I'm going to ask you to go to your house poster and meet somebody who's part of your house. And for a lot of you, you're like, I want to stay where I am in my comfort zone. We're going to push ourselves a little bit outside of our comfort zone and work on relationships. So over here, we have Slytherin. Uh, up here, we have Ravenclaw. Right over here, we have Hufflepuff. If someone could lift up that Hufflepuff that has fallen. And over here, we have Gryffindor. So once you find out your house, you're welcome to leave uh, your stuff where, where it is, or if you want to bring it with you, go ahead. I just it's only going to take about one minute. I just want to invite you all to go meet somebody new. So 10 through 17 is Gryffindor. 18 through 25 is Ravenclaw. 26 through 33 is Hufflepuff. And 34 through 40 is Slytherin. I'm going to Hufflepuff because I'm a Hufflepuff. I hope to meet more Hufflepuffs over here. Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm Karen. I apologize for being late. I don't think it changed the time I left, but I'm glad to be here today. This is a perfect thing for me to hear today. Not to worry. We're so glad you're here. Yeah. 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 Did you grow up in the community? Yeah. Um, well, more in this world. Yeah, yeah. From Olympia. Yeah. Olympia. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for coming. I hope some more Hufflepuffs come join. I'm curious what I'm curious what you all are going to be. Second second quiz, still a Hufflepuff. Still a Hufflepuff. <laughs> well, I'd like to introduce you to another Hufflepuff. Can't choose more than one. Folks on Zoom. I wanna encourage you to use the chat to say hello to one another, say something about yourself, where you are, make a connection even if it's virtual. Yeah. Are these all of our Raven clubs? What are you doing? Over here. I put it down here in case I needed to go talk to the one Slytherin. The big group over there. <laughs> go, yeah, go meet somebody new. Let's take about one more minute. If you see someone in your group that is not being chatted with yet, turn around and chat them up. Oh, right up here. What was your number? 22. 22. You're Raven. You're Ravenclaw. You're with that big group over there. The bowl. <laughs> what number did you get? 18. 18. Oh, also Ravenclaw. <laughs> no, Slytherin. Slytherin is over here and Gryffindor is over here. Okay. 
What's your number? Twenty-two. Oh, also Ravenclaw. <laughs> oh, Slytherins. Nice job being honest. Good for you. <laughs> Welcome. What's your name? Yana. Yana, thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. International students. So, yeah. Welcome. Yeah, we're, like huge fans of Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, it's so good to see you all. Thanks for coming. Okay, folks. Um, I would love to stay here all day, but let's go ahead and make our way back to a seat because I do have a conclusion to wrap up. Wow, that was really cool. Thank you all for being willing to participate and uh, step outside of your comfort zone. I hope folks on Zoom were brave enough to comment hello at least. My dad probably was. Thanks, dad. <clears throat> so after sharing this talk with my dad, he said, that's all well and great, but all of this, this energy, it doesn't go anywhere unless they share it. And so my challenge to you is, how will you share this? Who will you smile at, say hi to, ask a question to, call on the phone, hear their voice? Who will you write? Who will you connect with today? I want to end with a quote from Mark Twain that I think encompasses what I'm trying to say. There isn't time so brief as life for bickerings, apologies, heartburnings, callings to account. There is only time for loving and but an instant, so to speak, for that. So please take this with you make connections. Remember, relationships are what keep us happy and healthy, even though society may tell us that we're supposed to be independent and strong. Connect with someone today and share with them something that you've learned. And remember that we're all just trying our best and walking through this life together. So I appreciate every one of you taking your time to make a connection with me today. And I hope to see you all around in the community. Thanks for coming. Okay, so it looks like we have a little bit of time. If anybody has questions, please raise your hand and I'll bring the mic around for you. And the mic is so that we can get this on the recording and people who watch this later will be able to hear the questions. So I will launch us off a little bit. I am also somebody who read these as an adult. Um, and then shared them with my kids. Um, and it really was interesting to sort of see how something that was aimed at children could, you know, be something that I related to very strongly um, and to see the characters and the stories grow over the course of time. And so that was, that was meaningful to me as well. And a lot of the clips that I showed were from the beginning. And just know as the books and, and movies evolve, they're, they deal with a lot of really serious, thoughtful um, topics. So I just wanna encourage you, if you read the first book and watch the first movie and you're thinking, maybe not for me, keep going. Some interesting things happen. There's seven, oh. There are, yeah, sorry. The question was how many books are in the series? Yeah, yeah, seven. Mm -hmm. And eight movies, because they split the last one into two. What other questions might you have or thoughts? I'd love to hear if, if something is just sort of sticking with somebody. Oh, yeah. I have a reputation for talking too much, so I'll, uh, I'll add in with a question. First, I want to make a, uh, a disclaimer. Also read these books when I was an adult and they basically saved my life. Um, uh, the first three had been purchased for my cousin 
uh, by my mother uh, and they were sitting out on the counter in our family home and she was going to send them to my cousin, which meant I couldn't touch them. Um, and uh, then my mother uh, uh, got very ill and went into a coma and almost died. And uh, wow. OK, um, <laughs> this was like 22 years ago, so amazing that I still have emotion. Uh, but I started reading those books uh, because I could touch them because <laughs> she could say anything. Um, and uh, somebody else in the, my mom was in the ICU and uh, somebody else there was reading the books too. And her mom had lupus and did end up dying. And uh, we talked about the books together and I fell in love with these books. Oddly, um, that was the same summer that Survivor started up. Um, and so I started watching the Survivor television program, which, you know, obviously is somewhat uh, um coincidentally significant um given the name of the show um anyway so i wanted to share that if we're all sharing our harry potter experiences <laughs> uh, but i have a question so um what are your thoughts on uh the fact that there has to be different types of people since we have all the different sorting houses and so there's there's kind of a, a house for the mischievous and maybe we could call them evil um my uh my stepdaughter's favorite character is is professor snape who is one of the the most famous of the slytherin uh house what you know so what what's your thoughts on why those people you know have to be part of the community uh and are kind of an accepted sort of an accepted part of the community yeah that's interesting well um you know there there's a lot of research about personality quizzes in general and you know, really take them with a grain of salt. It's it's just one way to, um, you know, have fun and and meet new people. Um, but we crave this sense of belonging, and so sometimes when we find community within community, that's where we can find strength, right? And we see different sects of different religions. We see different uh, colleges and universities having mascots. There are lots of ways that people uh, find folks who who have similar beliefs as them. And that really helps us build community. Um, so I'm glad that there is a place for Slytherins. And you know what you might learn if you do read the books and novels is that um, sometimes folks who are in Slytherin turn out to really save the day. We need all types of folks with all types of personalities. Um, and so I think that's sort of the beauty of Harry Potter is that um, there are anti-heroes and heroes. And sometimes that role switches. Um, and sometimes your preconceived notions uh, really become tested. So I, I do want to encourage everyone to uh, take those life lessons and suspend your disbelief that sometimes your first impression of meeting someone is likely not accurate. Yeah, thank you. So Courtney asked me to make a little announcement that the LCC library is here and I brought the Harry Potter book series with me. So if you are a faculty, staff, or student, you may check those out right here today. If you are a community member and you, you would like to check them out, you can come back to the library with me and I'll set you up with a community borrowing library card for the LCC library. And if you're also interested in Dr. Phil Stutt's work, he has a book called Tools. Oh, let me put my reference page up. Um, not super visible. Sorry about that. There was a lot of referencing happening here. Um, he does have a book called Tools and also a documentary on Netflix um, as well. So if, if that's something, um, the tools work is something you might be interested in. And just a reminder, also, we got this question on the Zoom, and so I wanted to pass it on to our live audience as well. We do record these sessions, and we put them up on the LCC YouTube channel, as well as the uh, uh, Community Conversations website. So where you go to see the schedule underneath once, uh, you know, when the event is coming up, there will be the Zoom link. And then after the event is over, and once I do my job, like editing them and getting them up, then they go up on that website and you can watch these later or share them with your friends. So if there's anybody, if there is a Potterhead in your life that you want to share this information with, you can send them the link. So um, thank you all for joining us. Thank you to Ashley Cahill for uh, bringing us thank this presentation. You. And please join us again next week. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, next week is, um, I can read it. Yes, uh, we have uh, 
Becky Connolly, Kathy Demarest, Allison Hutchinson, uh, Sarah Parkin, and Brenda Sargent presenting Laughter and Literature, Not Your Mother's Book Club. <laughs>